Yeah, I used to listen to a lot of metal back in the day, a lot of rock and alternative stuff. Now I'm more into like EDM, but I still I think I grew up on that, so yeah, I've been connected to it for a while. On metal or on EDM? No, rock. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah same situation. Uh, three years, so you've been watching for a while, so you've seen all the dumb shit I post. So, <laughs> how long ago did you start? Uh, the brand started about about 2010, 2011, and uh, really started popping in 2015. And uh, same situation. It's just I was my dad. Uh, my house is always filled with metal. My dad. That was my dad's thing. My dad's thing was hair metal. So all the Rat, Poison, Bon Jovi, and uh, just from there, uh, he would he, he Ozzy. Ozzy took me to, you know, Sabbath. Sabbath took me to all that other harder stuff. And uh, it just took off from there. And, yeah, like I said, uh, it was kind of easy, an easy avenue for me to step into in 2010 and been doing it ever since. When you say easy avenue, what do you mean? Like the brand itself? Yeah, it was it was natural for me to, to be able to draw inspiration from it because it was just something that I was always listening to. Uh, I'm a huge hip-hop head, too. But metal is something that I grew up on. Rap music, hip hop music, I had to kind of like find on my own. I, it, I mean, I'm born in '88, so rap was already around, hip hop was already around. So that was for the past, for my whole life, that's probably been the pop music. So it's not you can you're gonna be exposed to it no matter what. And then being from Houston, the Houston culture and the Houston rap, uh, naturally I was able to pick up on that. But the metal music was was instilled in me by my dad and it was just a natural thing to draw inspiration from and i love that you mix the two genres in your clothing oh okay like yeah, your yeah. slow music and cough syrup yeah shirt. yeah thank you thank you that's that's the that's the goal like um it's really easy to be cheesy like <laughs> like uh i could have made the shirt say uh, you know from a, from a city of of drank and screw you know, I could have said something like that, but uh, to me, uh, I try to make everything kind of like a, like a wink. Like, you either get it or you don't, you know what I mean? And even if you don't understand the reference, I try to make it to where you, you're going to like it regardless. You know what I mean? You may not get the reference, but, you know, you're going to want to buy it just because I hope it looks cool to you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so. I can kind of tell that your shirts are still, I don't want to use the word trendy, but still like they say what could like they're subliminal in a way where it fits but it's not right. cheesy right but right it's still like oh shit like that's cool right yeah, yeah I, I try to make it it's it's i think that's the process in it all is like it's a it's a delicate balance between because there's some brands or there's some things that make you think too much and to me that's boring i don't want to have to I don't want to have to ha ask you about everything you're doing and I don't want to, you know, not understand what you're doing. And it's it's a way to try to figure out how can I mix this culture, uh, the Houston culture, the rap culture with uh, the metal culture and still make it relevant and make it look good and make it not cheesy. It's 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 not that hard, but it's also not as easy as you would think. But it gets easier when you're constantly, like I said, drawing inspiration from from these things so so now you've been doing this for almost 11 years now yeah how yeah. has it been staying consistent with that have you ever wanted to not do it anymore uh no no I, I surprisingly no i've never not wanted to do it but it has been hard it's not it's not easy you're gonna have slow times you're gonna have times where you're fucking tired you're gonna i tell people all the time i actually just told someone right now is I haven't slept in 10 years like it, you know it, it's it gets to where it's like man what am I fucking doing this for you know what uh, when is this gonna work or when is this gonna happen and, and uh, but I've never not wanted to do it um, I think I just stay so focused that nothing else matters like when you're when you're just like I think it'd be like swimming right like if you dive in and you just, you're swimming you're, you, you're, you, you're not really looking at where you're going you're just waiting to see like if you hit the wall to come up and and that's I, I feel like that's what I've been doing. Like I'm just head down swimming, and I'm not focused on anything else except for this. So it's like I don't want to stop. I just 
I just keep going, but it does get, it gets hard. You just got to stay focused, keep the inspiration. I've never heard that reference when you're swimming. Yeah. And you, that's crazy. Yeah. I love that. I mean, that's what the focus is to me. Like, uh, I'm 32 now and I feel like, uh, I feel like I didn't come up for water until I hit 30. Um, I was I was so focused on doing everything else that I had to do, and I never like stopped to enjoy like the the small victories, you know. Where most people would be like, "Oh man, you did this. This is cool. Oh man, you did that. That's cool." And to me, it was always like, "Yeah, I mean, it's cool, but that's not. I want that. Well, this is cool, but I want that." It wasn't until I hit 30 when I was like, "Man, I've done a lot, and I want to, I guess, take in a little bit of it. Stop and smell the roses. Come up <laughs> from come up for air. You know what I mean?" So. Yeah. Um, I'm like exploring phases in life where I guess you go through periods where you're constantly working and you can't balance out your social life or your relationships and you have to focus on work. And then there comes another phase in life where now you can enjoy a social life or alone time or just like different things that you wouldn't have whenever you were working constantly. That's exactly right. That, and I think, like I said, that goes back to what I was saying. Like, my teens, straight out of high school, I was working. Uh, I've had three kids back to back. So my entire 20s was spent working and building for them. I wasn't out partying. We would go out every once in a while, but I wasn't really doing too much. Um, I guess you could say I was building with the brand. And then at that time, I had a, uh, uh, a music producers competition called the Space City Beat Battle. I, that was like that was in 2010. Me and two other guys uh, had a competition for up and coming producers in the city, and it got really big. We were we were uh, South by Southwest uh, official performers for like five years. If, I, if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. But we were we were we. That was the only reason I was in South by Southwest was because of that, and we, I think we helped put a lot of local people on and. I got to meet a lot of uh, local celebrities and music artists and, and even abroad hip hop legends, uh, which also helped me when I transitioned to doing the clothing line, helped me reach out to them and ask them, you know, hey, let me just give you a shirt. All I want you to do is, you know, give me a shout out. So yeah, that, but going back to what you were saying, yeah, I, I, didn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't really living at that time. I was just working, I guess. And now I can sit back and, and relax. And a lot of people around me are, building like I was doing then so I'm doing what they were doing then yeah. but yeah it's definitely different phases but I'm enjoying the phases I'm at right now yeah good would you ever do that again what, which part for the beats battle I definitely would I definitely would there's a there's a there's a couple other uh, comp uh, I guess platforms that have been around before us while we were around and are still going and I'm definitely down if the things are right. Like I said, I'm a, I'm a huge hip hop head. Um, that was that was super fun. Uh, one of my one of my brothers passed away. DJ Arsenic, the one that helped put us on together. Uh, he passed away, so rest in peace. And it, it'd be hard to find somebody to fill those fill those shoes, but yeah, yeah I'd imagine. definitely do that again. Yeah, damn. So how many years has it been since then? Oh man, maybe. 14, 15, we might have stopped somewhere around there. 14, 15, 16, somewhere around there. We had a good run. We had a good run, and, and when, we, uh, when we hung it up, we all kind of agreed that it was time. We all went away from it happy. We had some fucking amazing times. We did some dope shit. So shout out to T. Piper and uh, Jedi Master. Those are two guys that helped put it on with also Arsenic. So that was fun. That's badass. Do you vendor at events? I do, I do. Wherever people invite me out, y'all want me to come through. Y'all ain't afraid to have me out. I'm down to come through, <laughs> you know what I mean? Do you do it often? Well, I guess not now because of last year, but. Yeah, it, it, it slowed down because of COVID. It's picking back up now. But yeah, I do them when, when they invite me out. If it makes sense, uh, if it's something that makes sense, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely down. I'm always willing to bring a little party out to it. Yeah, do you like doing it? I do. Sometimes it gets pretty fucking hot. <laughs> yeah. But, you know. Yeah, for sure. Other than that, you can drink unless it's too hot to drink. <laughs> and then it's not so fun, but most of it is fun. I enjoy it. So I want to get back to how you started clothing, how you started a clothing brand. Okay. 
what was there's definitely a barrier to entry but maybe not as much anymore but i know back then there was because all of the online digital print on demand stuff didn't start until a couple years ago but right. what what kind of challenges did you face when starting a clothing brand uh the cost which i'm sure most people that's what most people's barrier is uh, it's not easy it's not cheap screen printing is uh set up for bulk orders it's set up for wholesale yeah. so if you're trying to get a, a low price point you need to be ordering hundreds five hundreds thousands and the typical up-and-coming person isn't you know they they don't have the clientele to move that many items they're needing to get and it's just one design too what right exactly <laughs> yeah so that's what hurts so you have you know and then it may be something crazy and then if you get something crazy you, you then you learn that okay every color More is a colors. different cost yeah <laughs> You know, um, merch from my podcast is out now at shoptoughluck.com. If you would like to support this podcast, I have my merch produced through Printful, which is a print on demand service. You can upload your designs and you don't have to pay to open up a store or purchase anything up front. How it works is your customers make a purchase from your web store that you create and then they fulfill the order for you, send it straight to your customer and you don't have to touch any of the inventory or the products, which is incredible if you have a lot of different designs you wanna try out or you just don't want to make an initial investment on your merchandise right now, which I think is great for influencers. To attach Printful to your web store, go to printful.com slash a slash Desanti. Yeah, it's really hard, um, but so what I did, I've always, I've always been the type, I've never really thought about what it takes to get there. I've always looked at things more of like, that needs to happen. Now let me start working on what I need to make it happen. Like if I tell you I need to move to New York and you say, well, the cost of living is high and can you afford this and can you afford that? And does this make sense? Does that make sense? In my mind, none of that matters. I mean, it, it, it matters because yeah, I need, to, I need to be able to afford it. But the, what I mean is I look at it as like, it doesn't matter how much the cost of living is. I need to find something where I can survive in that cost of living. So let me work on that. Yeah. And then, well, how are you going to get there? Well, I'll find somebody or I'll do something. I'll say, well, buy a plane ticket. Like, I realized I needed to have a clothing line. Uh, the first few that I did, I did order. Uh, I had them made. It was expensive, but I did it. What was the first design? Uh, the first three designs. Well, the first thing was the skull. The skull logo came up, and uh, I love that. I thank love you, thank the skull you. logo. And I did that a shirt like that with the with, it was camo, and then I did the uh, kicks, chicks, and licks. That was the second, I like that too. and the third was the racket, the uh, old school uh, rockets design, but it says racket with the flying V. Oh, I saw a picture of it on Instagram. Yeah, those three were the first three that I had printed out and made, and uh, I did those three. Like I said, it wasn't cheap, but I did it. And then I realized that I needed to make more. That's when I that was, that's when I learned about how the screen printing business worked. And then I decided that I needed to make them my own, to make them on my own. Yeah, that's yeah. what happened to me too. Yeah. When I started my clothing brand, right. I started ordering from an online wholesaler. Okay. And then I was like, let me just do it myself. Right. But there is a learning curve for screen printing because yes. that's a whole art in itself. Yeah, I've probably been screen printing for about five years. Wow. And anybody that's listening, no, I do not screen print. because I know. I hate yeah. when people ask me to screen print for oh, them. No, I wise, I've, I've gotten wise. When, I, you know, when you go out and they, hey, who does your stuff? I, I Somebody else. <laughs> because the whole conversation goes left. It's like, okay, I don't give a fuck about your brand anymore. Do yeah, you print Yeah, it's them? like, I need shirts printed. Yeah. No, hey, can please you print no. Them? Yeah, so I don't, yeah. I'm not a screen printer. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Nah, but uh, but that but that goes along with what I was saying. Like I said, no, nah, I got to do it myself. And then it's like, well, how? You don't know how to screen print? Like, well, then I got to learn. Well, you need the you need the equipment. Well, then I got to buy it. Yeah. Well, you need it. Well, then I got to do it. And five years later, I'm still doing it. Uh, it's a it's a bitch. It sucks. It is. But, it's but a it pain is what it is. Ass. Yeah. yeah but very much so. When it's for yourself, and I think when you get it going, then it's, sure. it's cool and it's fun. For sure. And that, that goes back to the, the whole swimming thing. Like, you know, it, it's, you know, aren't you tired? Yeah, but that doesn't matter. I got to do this. Well, don't you want to? Yeah, but, you know, I, the end game is all I'm focused on. I need yeah. to make this happen, and this is what needs to happen. And 
it is what it is. Life sucks. I'd rather be doing this shit and complaining about it than, you know, doing anything else that I don't want to do and yeah, that's for true. someone else. Yeah, for sure. When I first started screen printing, I was using a yellow light bulb and I would burn my screens oh, yeah. in the in my mom's bathroom. Okay. And I would put like a towel under the door so no light yeah. would come in. And then I would rinse out the screen in the shower. Okay. And there was emulsion everywhere. Oh, and yeah. And there's probably still stains over there right now. Yep. Yeah, I got uh, my, my whole back patio has blue stains. And I have to go out there occasionally with my pressure washer and get it all off. And See, you went the, you went the, the, you, you went the, 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 the grimy route. Yeah. I went straight to the top. That, that's. That's the other thing. Don't get me wrong. I'll do things like that. Like uh, before I was buying transparencies, I was printing them out on paper uh -huh. and then putting them on baby oil. Oh, my God. What? Yeah, have you ever seen that? No. Yeah. I used to I used to draw, the, draw on the transparencies with Sharpie, okay, but I so was so broke. I, like, did not right. have any money for supplies, right, so right, I was right. trying to go, like, the cheapest way. Right. Most DIY possible. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And see... Uh, I, I, that would have been me as well, uh, but I had the means to do it. And my thing was like, I'm just gonna do what I gotta fucking do. And I actually bought a screen printer, uh, the heat, the flash dryer, the oh, good. exposure unit, good. screens, like That's everything. So yeah, yeah, it is. But uh, like I said, I didn't have a way to print transparencies for a while, so I would print the image on just a sheet of white paper and put it on the screen. And if you use baby oil, it kind of just I guess makes it look transparent. Makes it look transparent. Excuse me. And then it works the same. It doesn't work as good because you'll probably go through about four or five screens to get it right. But oh yeah, it's it was it was a bitch. But yeah. I remember staying up until like three a.m. just like rinsing out the waiting for the screen to burn and then rinsing it out and then it would blow out and I would be like. Yeah. Another hour like, yeah. that I need to wait. No, that's the that's the uh, the learning curve you're referring to. Like, I'd have ten screens coded, right? Leave them in the garage overnight, and the next day, uh, trying to figure out exposure times. Like, okay, I did this one for this long. Here we go. Screen blows out. This one for this long. So, ten ten screens and you know two days, yeah. just trying to get the skull on the back of the shirt and. It's fucking frustrating, but that's the thing you got to do when you're trying to make your things work. And yeah, you have to have grit. You have to have grit. You have to have patience. You have to have, I don't know. Drive. Drive. Yeah, it's, Definitely it ain't for really everybody. <laughs> Definitely ain't for everybody. No. What sign are you? Do you believe in astrology? Yeah, yeah. It, man, we were just talking about that yesterday. Uh, I'm a Scorpio. Okay, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, I'm a Scorpio. In a sense, sense, in a good way or a bad way? No, in a good way. Okay. Because they're very driven, hardworking, very, like, organized, and just on top of shit. Mm. Like, they get shit done. Hell yeah. Diddy's a Scorpio, so that's all I need. Oh, and Jay Prince. I found out Jay Prince is a Scorpio. I like that. <laughs> yeah, J Diddy and Jay Prince are two good uh, examples to want to be like. So now... What was a significant turning point in your business? Uh, probably linking up with two uh, very important individuals, uh, two people I call family, uh, one being Rob G and the other being uh, Donkey Boy. Uh, meeting both of these guys, they've, they've both put me in positions that I could never repay them for. They've both done things for me I could never repay them for. Uh, they both put me in, uh, in, in, in places with people that have helped tremendously. And, uh, yeah, uh, just, you know, because that's, that's the other half of it is networking, getting out, meeting people, uh, putting it in people's faces, showing them what you're doing, giving them a reason to, wanna, to want to interact with you, to want to follow you, to want to be connected with you. And uh, those guys have both given me endless opportunities. Those guys have uh, welcomed me in their homes like family and uh, v vice versa. So th those two dudes. So Ralph G, Sneaker Summer Ralph G, and Donkey Boy. Everybody knows Donkey Boy. So uh, them two dudes. Shout out to them two. Love y'all. Thank you so much. That's about us. They say it's all about relationships and 
I, w- I would say networking, but that sounds kind of surface because these are genuine relationships that you build with people, and then the True. people that you have around you, that's the people that you want to talk good about you. If you right. Like how they say, if your friends, like your friends should mention your name in a room full of opportunities. True, you know? true. Yeah, and um, yeah, that's I think that is true, building relationships. And, and I think understanding the relationships and what they're built on. Uh, you know, you can't, you can't expect personal favors from business relationships. And you can't expect business favors from personal relationships. And you got to understand, there's a, every, so? I, I think, I mean, I think it can happen. I think the key is not expecting it. Yes. It, things and not have, being entitled. Not being entitled. Things have to, to happen naturally and you have to know the room you're in. You have to know what you're doing. You have to know, and you have to give people a reason. You know, you, you can't, uh, can't ask for a seat at the table if you don't have a dish of your own. Yeah. You gotta, exactly. ha- you gotta have that reason. And, and, and of course, yeah, I mean, you, you do have to, you can help each other and, and that's definitely what you know me and all the people that I know that's what we all do we're all there for each other I know we can all depend on each other um, but it's also not expecting things from other people you know yeah. what I mean you gotta you gotta still respect what everybody has going on yeah and and move accordingly that's every in building a brand there's so many fucking aspects to it and every aspect is an art form in itself like I know, I know people, artists, creators, what have you, key people who can go out and make fucking beautiful things happen, whatever it is they do, but they can't talk in front of a camera or they, you know, they're not good at speaking to people. Or you may know people that can fucking, they got the gift of gab, they can talk your ear off, but they don't have anything else to offer. You know, and uh, uh, there you got people that can network like a motherfucker, but don't know how to maintain those relationships. It's every fucking aspect is a, is a, is an art form in itself. Yeah. It's a lot. It is a lot. I guess you learn as you go. Yeah, I think you, you do. Have to. I think you do. And none of it can be taught, which is crazy because you can have a communications degree or a business degree right. or even watch YouTube videos on networking or everything but you still won't know until you get out there and do it for yourself right and i I think that goes back to like what i'm talking about with the art form of like uh like we talked about trying to make things uh or when i make designs or if i make something that's gonna really pop like you know i've met people that might like you said might have degrees in like retail or uh, you know something like that and but that doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean that what you do is going to work in the street. It's not going to work, you know, with, with people in the, I don't know, in the urban community, in the streetwear community. That may not work. It may Just not. In the real world. Yeah, it may not translate over. And I'm excited for, because I, I know you call it the street, but, or like the urban world, but I would like to think that that's coming more to be the norm, regular real world oh for sure um i'm excited for this whole wave of professionalism or what is not corporate but what is like the opposite side of what we consider urban right to die away right right right, right, just be like everyone and well well to be clear the the youth the urban market the counterculture has always been the culture it's just that the other side has never given the respect that it deserves. And the people that have been able to travel over were the lucky ones. You know what I mean? Um, it's just that now with social media, really, and, and this whole mind frame that these younger generation has of not wanting to work for anybody, not, not wanting to work. There's a difference. Yeah. Not not sure. wanting to work, just not wanting to work for someone. Uh, the the independent mindset that comes with all this social media and these younger this younger generation, I think they're really taking all of that shit back. Of like, if I'm dope, why do I gotta work for you? Yeah. Yeah. If I if I'm or rappers like that, I don't fucking. There's so, I'm so out of touch. There's so many rappers and so many people that are, you know, my kid sisters or even my kids will know and. 
I've never fucking heard of them, but they got millions of followers, money. Yeah. They're doing shows. I'm like, I don't, I've never fucking heard of them. Like, when I was a kid, you had to be on the radio. You had to be on TRL. You had to be on uh, Rap City, The Basement. You had to be on MTV. You had to be somewhere. You had to be with a big record label. You're with Def Jam or something like the Interscope. You had it. Now, you don't need that. You just need a following. And, and, and I think it's... It's bleeding out of the end of the music industry into all, I guess, art forms, all into all creatives to where people are saying, I don't need, I don't need, I don't need anybody. Yeah. I can or do like, it on my own. I don't own. need to clean up to get a good job or I don't need to now be the, what's popular in order for, like now the alternative culture is becoming what's popular. Right. And right. now even like with TikTok, I'm not sure if you're on TikTok, but TikTok um, is yeah. becoming like the main stream marketing. For sure. Which is all the alternative kids and all of the people that are against what is considered to be normal. For sure. Uh, we were having a conversation about that the other day, uh, me and a friend of mine, and uh, we were talking about how uh, if your song goes, if your song becomes like a TikTok song, you're, you're, you've made it. Yeah, like he said that on Spotify, like all the top 10 songs are all TikTok songs. So it's, wow. yeah, these kids, are, these kids are running the game, man. I love it. I love it. I mean, like you, like you mentioned, not having to fit in or having a clean cut image. Like I've said this in my circle several times. Uh, I know that the content that I create, I know that the things that I do, I'm not going to be on, uh, I'm not going to be on any clean cut um, <laughs> outlets I, I get that I know I'm probably closing some doors on myself but I'd rather get into the doors as I am yeah. and, and 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 be able to survive there than to change up what I am to be you know at any other any other spot you know what I mean I, I'm happy with what I'm doing I'm I like where I'm at I like that I make my own rules and do what I want to do it's yeah. I wouldn't have it any other way I love that exactly I before I guess when I was I guess I had a realization a couple of years ago where I was realizing I was trying to be all business professional mm -hmm. and not cuss online because right. ads don't like it whenever you cuss online because oh, they sure. don't drive traffic to your page. Right. And then I was like, I'm just going to do me and whoever wants to associate with me, they can. Whoever doesn't, right. then that's just not who I want to associate with anyways. For sure. Professionally. Like, right. whatever brands don't want to work with me, that's fine. Exactly, because I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want somebody to come up to me and then I post something and I'm like, hey, man, we can't work with you. And I'm not, I'm not spewing hate. I'm not spewing anti-anything. I'm not spewing anti-anybody. If anything, I'm pro-everything. I don't care what you want to do. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> don't bother me. I don't, I don't care. And, uh, you know, they, they, they say things like that. They'll say, you know, well, you know, we can't do this, you can't do that. But the age old, you know, the age old fucking saying that sex sells, this sells, that sells. And you can't tell me that, uh, you know, you can't do this or you can't do that. But Kim K will post a bikini shoot and get, you know, break the internet, which is dope. I'm, I'm loving it. Do it. Yeah. Keep on doing it. I, anybody who don't like it or has anything negative to say, fucking losers as far as I'm concerned. But. That's that's what people want to see. That's what we want. That's what everybody wants. That's what that's that's real fucking life. I mean, so let people live. I was talking to one of my friends yesterday, Nana, and she said that by holding back from um, posting things like that that are like showing off like women's bodies or just being sexual in general, by suppressing that, you're actually making it worse because it's going somewhere else like because every action has an equal and opposite reaction so by suppressing it and not normalizing it it's getting worse on the back end so everyone should just stop pretending like they don't look at stuff like that right anyway. <laughs> right yeah i mean that's that's actually a good point i never thought about that i mean I just like, like i said this goes back to just you know let people live like i did that porn hub shirt i love that shirt <laughs> thank you and and it's surprisingly more women wanted it than guys yeah. and it's like it's cool bro like it, like the taboos gotta go yeah. you know the, the all this shit has to go like it's just just we're grown we're too old for all this shit yeah too old to be lying and and hiding it's all good have you ever thought of being 
a blog or a magazine? Uh, magazine, no. Blog, no. I, nah. Writing is too. Uh, I, I, I. I wouldn't mind writing. I'd rather do the talking. Like I'm not a reader. I'd rather watch it. Okay. Like all these people that post that. fucking pictures, like new books, new this that I picked. I'm not reading all that shit. <laughs> Like, even the things that I have to read, I fucking hate doing it. Okay. I just, I, you know, can you, ex- can you read it and explain it to me? Give me some fucking spark notes, because I don't like reading. Maybe it's a patience thing. I don't know. What about a show? Like I could a do a show. I thought about doing a podcast, man, but uh, after all this talking about not being afraid and this and that, I'm not afraid. I'm just afraid for you. <laughs> Like, I don't know if y'all would be ready for me to have a podcast. And I don't know who's going to be willing to come on my podcast because y'all might be afraid. Because my podcast will go there and it will go there very quickly and it won't stop. Well, no. <laughs> what, what's the saying? Like, no promotion is bad promotion or something yeah, like uh, that? Yeah, no, no, no. There's no such thing as bad publicity. Yeah. That, that, that might book. be true, man. That might be true, but, you know, I'll run with some, I'll run with it. It'll like be interesting. You should, evoking emotion out of people isn't always a bad thing. No, not at all. Um, if it's natural. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not real big on, like, let me shock you to shock yeah. you. But, uh, you know, definitely get a, get, get. I think I'm more interested in getting honesty than a reaction. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like if, like you said, okay, the Pornhub shirt. If you're like, oh, I love that shirt. I watch porn, or I love Pornhub, or anything of that nature. Like, I'd rather get that, um, or get like a, oh man, that's cool, but I can't wear that, man. I'm not doing it. You know, I would appreciate that more than just the shock and awe, the honesty, because sometimes honesty is fucking more shocking than the lie you know what that's i mean true. so i think that's what it is is i i would just be super honest about everything and just let it play out like that you know what i mean so then what is the next step for your business uh my ultimate goal is to have a flagship store uh shout out to those who came before me uh you know you got the biggest stores you got the the premium goods you got uh, uh, did it ourselves are out there. Got one uh, outlaw, you know. You got uh, Tipping Point, all these big shops. That's what I want for me. I want my skull logo glowing in neon lights. I want people to come through, hang out, chill, grab some teas, grab some things, and just uh, you know, come give me your thoughts and your ideas, and let me know how y'all feel about it. Let me know what I'm doing wrong and right. Would you have like a like an alternative coffee shop or like a like a like a coffee and tea alternative bar cuz I yeah. love yeah, that, those. Yeah, yeah, uh, Tipping Point's doing something like that. Uh they got the coffee shop, shout yeah, out to the Tipping do, Point. They do. Yeah. So uh they they're doing that. Uh there's a spot called Perky Cups in the city. You heard of that? Mm-hmm. It's basically like uh I would say Twin Peaks, but they're wearing less than Twin Peaks. <laughs> It's it's like a, a uh, from what I've seen, it's all women baristas in lingerie serving uh, coffee. Uh-huh. Um, perhaps they sell more things. I'm not too sure, but it's called Perky Cups, if I'm not mistaken. But so anyway. shout out to y'all doing some dope shit. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure, but invite me out. I'd like to come through. Let's do a pop up. <laughs> let's do a let's do a let's do a collab. That'd be dope. Yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm down to do something like that. Uh, Maybe maybe something more along the lines of a of a bar. Maybe if alcohol's involved. Oh yeah. But yeah, maybe coffee yeah. and tea. Maybe coffee. Something really hard though. Yeah. Yeah. I used to have an Instagram uh, alternative coffee page. Okay. So I think I love the like black coffee with like skulls kind of for sure branding. I think it's badass. Yeah, for sure. That that would that'd be something totally. Different. That's how I drink my coffee. Black can't have all that other stuff in there. <laughs> and where can people find you online? Uh, social media, Instagram is uh, Heavy Metal Racket. 
Facebook is Heavy Metal Racket. Uh, Twitter, I very rarely get on there, which I probably should because Instagram's being a hoe and blocking me with the crazier things that I post. So Heavy Metal HTX, uh, I'll probably just start photo dumping all the too hot for TV shit, all the too hot for IG shit, yeah. throw it on Twitter. Uh, or HeavyMetalRacket.com, that's where you can go and order. I uh, appreciate everybody that's been fucking with me. Thank you for following me and thank you for having me. And, you know, thanks for supporting me. Yeah. And to everybody else, thank you. It's been a long, fucking funny, weird, but fun ride. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.